and you are looking at live views from Falcon 9 on Launchpad 40 in Cape Canaveral, preparing for our USSF 124 mission. We are finishing up loading propellant and liquid oxygen onto the Falcon 9 first and second stages. We should be wrapping up. Stage two, locks load complete. There it is, that is the call out. We have finished loading propellant and liquid oxygen onto our Falcon 9. We're under two minutes to launch here. And again, you can see the condensation of that really cold liquid oxygen condensing with the humid air of Florida and that venting that you see on the side is normal and expected. That is from the transporter erector liquid oxygen line. Now the next milestone will be at T minus one minute where the Falcon 9 internal flight Ground, computers yeah, will take over the count. Shortly afterwards, the launch director will give the go for launch and Falcon 9 will be ready for launch. Falcon 9 is in startup. Falcon 9 is in startup. This is the mission director. Go for launch. There is that final mission director go. All systems are go for a launch of Falcon 9 and USSF 124. minus 30 seconds. T minus 15 seconds. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Mission and lift off. Go Falcon, go 124. Vehicle pitching down range. Everyone, D, chamber pressure, you have it all. Successful liftoff from Space Launch Complex 40 in Cape Canaveral, Florida. Love is in the air today, and now Falcon 9 is too. Our next milestone is at the T plus 1 minute and 12 mark, which will be max Power Q. Nominal. And max Q is the moment of peak mechanical stress on the rocket. Great views of Falcon 9 there. Mach 1 coming up on max Q in just a few seconds. Max Q. There was max Q and you could see the really cool view of Falcon going supersonic. You could see that little sonic boom in the live views there. And coming up in uh, just a, about a minute here are four- and engine chill has started four events in rapid succession. So the first will be main engine cutoff. And this is where all nine of the Falcon first stage M1D engines will shut off in preparation for stage separation, which is when the first and second stages will separate, followed by second engine startup, which is when that Merlin vacuum engine of the second stage will start up to boost the payload to low earth orbit. And then the last event is the boost back burn where the Falcon 9 first stage will ignite to orient itself to head back to land. Now you can see these events will start in just about 10 seconds here with main engine cutoff. Main engine cutoff. Stage separation confirmed. And that's it. 
stage one boost back startup. There you saw and heard the confirmation of a successful main engine cutoff, stage separation, second engine start, and boost back burn start. You can see great views from the Falcon first stage. The grid fins will be deploying here shortly. And coming up is fairing deployment as well. And as a reminder, we won't see any live views from the second stage today, so we won't see the fairings deploy, but we will get confirmation of their deployment. Fairing separation confirmed. There you heard that call out for successful fairing deployment. Now, coming up next is the end of the boost back burn, which will be happening in just under 10 seconds here. Stage one boost back shutdown. There you heard that confirmation of the shutdown of the boost back burn. That is a good burn of the first stage. Again, you are watching a live webcast for USSF 124, a collaboration, okay, nominal trajectories. a collaboration between the Space Systems Command, the U.S. Missile Defense Agency, and the U.S. Space Forces Space Development Agency, delivering two prototype satellites to orbit as part of the hypersonic and ballistic tracking space sensor program, as well as the SDA's final four tranche zero tracking layer satellites. You can see our grid fins have deployed there, um, and these will help reorient that first stage as it makes its way back down to Earth. And you can see uh, those puffs of gas, they're coming from the attitude control system, and that is nitrogen gas that is coming out. Now today we will be attempting to recover the Falcon 9 first stage back at landing zone two. And in just a couple minutes, the booster will execute an entry burn followed by a landing burn. Now both of these burns are meant to slow the booster down rapidly before landing. And if we do have a successful landing today, it will mark the 272nd landing of an orbital class rocket. Now, in order to make its way back down to land for orbit, Falcon 9 does have two more burns to execute. We already performed our boost back burn. So coming up next is the entry burn in just about a minute. And this is where three of the Merlin engines of the first stage will reignite. And this will help slow the stage down as it re-enters the upper parts of the Earth's atmosphere. And then the third and last burn is the landing burn. And this is a single engine burn that brings the vehicle speed down rapidly in order to land back on Earth. You can see those nitrogen cold gas thrusters of our attitude control system, along with our grid fins. Now those are hypersonic grid fins, and there's four of them around the top of the Falcon first stage. We're coming up on the start of our first stage entry burn. This will be about a 20 second burn starting in just a few seconds. Stage one entry burn. There is the start of our stage one entry burn. And this is a three engine burn that's slowing that first stage down. Stage one entry burn shutdown. There is that shutdown. Stage of one the FTS has saved. Shutdown of the Both engines. vehicles are on nominal trajectories. And those call outs were that the flight termination system has been saved and trajectories are all nominal. Coming up next is our stage one landing burn in just about 30 seconds here as we come back towards the coast of Cape Canaveral. Again, there are four landing legs arranged around Falcon 9 first stage, which will deploy just prior stage to landing. Stage one is transonic. The vehicle is traveling around 900 miles per hour right now, so that landing burn is really going to slow it down. Stage 
of one landing burn. There is the start of that stage one landing burn. Stage two is in thermal guidance. Super cool views of landing zone two approaching quick. Stage one landing like deploy. Stage one landing confirmed. Stage two FTS approved. Awesome views. There you have it. We have successfully made the 272nd landing of an orbital class rocket. And with that successful confirmation of our booster landing that will bring today's webcast to a close, we'd like to give a heartfelt thank you to the United Space. State Space Force for entrusting us with today's mission. And before you go, as many of you know, February is Black History Month. Since 1976, the United States has designated this month of February as a time to recognize and celebrate the critical roles that Black Americans had and continue to have in shaping our history. Diversity in backgrounds, mindsets, and perspectives is critical to making humanity multi-planetary and this month we honor the achievements and contributions made by Black Americans throughout history. And every day we strive for a work environment that allows all employees to do their best work. So thank you for your interest in SpaceX and for tuning in. Again, today we are attempting three launches in within roughly eight hours from three different launch pads across the country. So if you're interested in more launch coverage, be sure to check out spacex.com launches and stay tuned for the upcoming Starlink launch here from Vandenberg, California in just under two hours. You can see the launch pad on the left of your screen, as well as the Intuitive Machines 1 mission planned for 1.05 a.m. Eastern time at Launch Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center that you'll see on the right of your screen there. Thanks again for tuning in, and we hope to see you soon.